What you're seeing is a video called Scrotum 1, also known as the Adventures of Scrotum the Puppy, uploaded to Newgrounds by Brian Beaton on the 6th of April 2000. I wouldn't call Scrotum 1 a good video, but it is significant, not only because it was the first user-generated animation uploaded to Newgrounds, but because, in a way, it set the tone for what that site would become. It's crude, amateurish, violent and irreverent, the sort of thing you wouldn't see anywhere else back in the year 2000. Before it became that website with Friday Night Funkin', that's what Newgrounds was even before YouTube, it was the place to come and see things that you just wouldn't see on TV. And now, 22 years after Scrotum 1, it seems like TV might finally be catching up. Pim, can we watch something else? It's, it's, it's about to get really good. It's about to get really good. Trust me. Smiling Friends is the newest adult animated comedy from Adult Swim, and I know there are few formats as creatively bereft as the adult animated comedy, but trust me when I say that this one is good and genuinely hilarious. And yeah, funny should be a pretty low bar for a comedy to clear, but we all know there are so many that don't even get that high. The general premise of the show involves main characters Pim and Charlie, voiced by the show's creators Michael Cusack and Zach Hadel, who are employed as the titular Smiling Friends, essentially contractors you can hire for a day to cheer either yourself or someone you know up. Oh hello, are you the Smiling Friends? That's us ma'am, here to bring smiles and make the world a better place. Technically, I guess that makes the show a workplace sitcom, but only in the loosest sense possible. The episodes can range from anything between the duo being hired to cheer up a shrimp who's lost his girlfriend to a fantasy quest, a murder mystery, to whatever this shit is. Despite a long history of making original animated comedy by Smiling Friends creators, it's fair to say that there's a healthy amount of scepticism around online creators transitioning to traditional media. For every Bo Burnham, there's a smattering of smoshes, Lily Sings, and Shane Dawson's. Look, Pim, I know it's her job to help this guy and everything, but I think this guy's a lost cause. He's obviously made of his mind. Why don't we just cut our losses and get out of here? And that shouldn't be a surprise. Creators who find success in quick, short-form content made on their own terms, they're not necessarily going to be comfortable in large-scale, expensive TV and movie productions, where they're answerable to studios and executives. And when it comes to the final product, context and expectation play a big part in how comedy is received. Pulling a funny face has a different impact when it's done directly into your phone's camera versus when it's in front of people seated 50 feet away from you in a studio set. So the question is, how did Michael and Zach create a traditional made-for-TV series that captures that distinctive creator-driven style of comedy that can really only be found online? And trust me, there is more to it than just getting chills to voice a character. Number 15. Could I get the number 15? One of those factors is definitely reflected in how Smiling Friends looks. Zach and Michael have been animating online for a long time, and like any artists, have developed signature styles. The main cast almost represents a fusion of their two styles, but background characters tend to be a little bit more distinctly either Michael's or Zach's. The result is that Smiling Friends doesn't really have a set house style. There aren't any locked in design rules that a character's appearance has to abide by. And this isn't an oversight, this is the way Smiling Friends is supposed to be. The show emphasises that through its heavy use of mixed media, blending together 2D, 3D and rotoscoped animation alongside live action. Some characters are incredibly detailed and painstakingly animated, while others barely look like more than scribbles. The result is this completely heterogeneous setting, a weird, anarchic, animated Wild West, not entirely unlike Newgrounds in those early days of online animation, where a chaotic mix of styles was the norm and you barely knew what the next video you clicked on was going to look like. This unpredictability also extends to the structure of the show's writing as well. 
Smiling Friends is very much in favour of keeping episodes self-contained. There's no law running through its first season, and it's funny that Zack had actually at one point considered going down a more serialised narrative, but went off the idea once it no longer felt like fresh territory. Like years ago, yeah. years ago, years ago, I remember I was really into the idea of doing something that was serialised, and this was before, like, uh, before South Park had done it, and before like Rick and Morty was even out, and before BoJack Horseman, before a lot of those shows, I was super into that idea. And then I'm not even saying it's like bad or it's even overdone, but like that, it felt like really fresh territory at some point. And then yeah, yeah. at some point, because also the show's 11 minutes long. I guess that old rebellious new ground spirit is hard to squash. When every other animated comedy on TV is focusing so hard on continuity, it's only natural that Smiling Friends would go against the grain and double down on being episodic. What this gives Smiling Friends is the chance to treat every episode like a sandbox, with potential plot lines as unrestricted as its setting. Within an episode, there is a framework of a plot, but the nature of the show makes it difficult to predict where it's going to go and where the jokes are going to jump out at you from. The show is heavy on deriving humour from dialogue that either is or definitely sounds like it's being ad-libbed. It's far from the first animated comedy to make use of this style of delivery. Home Movies was doing it decades ago, and more recently it's been notable in shows like Rick and Morty. But in Smiling Friends, it feels like another extension of the creator's history with internet humour. Zack in particular has an extensive history of featuring on podcasts and Let's Plays, where most of the comedy comes from these improvised, off-the-cuff jokes and conversations. This completely spontaneous style of humour is essentially as far as you could get from the intensive structured focus needed to make an animation, and yet the internet has seen the two combine in the form of the animated. Popular snippets taken from longer audio and animated over by fans, usually full of expressive visual gags and in-jokes. In a way, it's the best of both worlds, allowing for the detailed craftsmanship of animation and the spontaneity of improv, and is really one of the few types of short-form animation still viable to artists today. By embracing this naturalistic, conversational style of line delivery, Smiling Friends is almost cutting out the middleman and making its own animateds. If Smiling Friends was a podcast, this is what the fan-made shorts would look like and we'd be sharing them and laughing at them, and that's really all an episode of Smiling Friends is trying to do, to make you laugh. And it's here that Michael and Zach's experience with short-form online comedy is one of the key elements to why Smiling Friends works. I'm trying to watch the bloody television in here! Stephen, get in here and sit at the dinner table! Your son's home! Oh, would you shut the f*** up, woman? I was down in the bloody mines for 14 hours today! You killed me! You shut up! Almost every scene in this show is written to function like a standalone one or two minute animated comedy. And judging by the proliferation of Smiling Friends clips uploaded within a day of the series airing, I think it worked. But a lot of credit has to go to Adult Swim, not only for greenlighting the series in the first place, but for giving its creators the freedom to make the show in their way. And that goes beyond just allowing them to create the content that they want. It means finding a way to accommodate the online approach to production in a traditional animation environment. What I mean by that is essentially the pitfalls that so many online creators struggle with when moving to TV or movies. Learning to deal with not being in complete control of your creation, either by limitations imposed by higher-ups, or by the fact that you're not physically hands-on with the entire process anymore, and giving up the work to those specialised departments. Possibly the most significant outcome of Smiling Friends is that TV studios aren't just looking at YouTube for leading stars anymore, it's that they're starting to trust creators enough to put them in positions where they can make real decisions. And trust is the key word here, on both sides. Michael and Zach had to trust different departments to deliver on their vision, and those departments had to trust the changes that they made to the process wouldn't upset the entire production. 
Those changes included Michael and Zach approving every single shot in the show and selecting individual line readings, way more hands-on than would be expected of showrunners, as well as amending scenes that had already been signed off and bringing in collaborators from their past online projects. No doubt at all that uh, some of Michael and Zach taking on extra responsibilities had to do with the show's pretty meagre budget, but it helps to recreate some of that homemade spirit of an old Newgrounds collab, where a small group of dedicated individuals would be hands-on across character design, animation, backgrounds, colouring, recording, editing, music, and everything else to make the best thing they were capable of. It's why shots are filled to the brim with blink and you'll miss them personal touches, like Glep watching Michael's fedora neckbeard Lucas the Magnificent character, or a joke referencing Zack's iconic knowledge of post-war US presidential election results. My favourite of these has to be the sprinting child from the back of the family dinner scene in episode 1, and then seeing a framed image that's just a single frame from his run cycle, which is a background gag on top of a background gag, and just, yes, more of that. Or it's why they can bring in someone to record some lines in one episode. It's Smallmo! If you want Smallmo to be the fifth smiling friend, text Smallmo to 555-0100. And then that same person guest animates the Rankin Bass homage in another, or someone who can supply both the 3D models and the theme song. That's what independent animation does to a creator, and it's why Zach and Michael have at least some proficiency across all these departments. I guess you could describe them as a couple of Renaissance men? Who yeah, are the I'm Renaissance saying, men? Saying, I don't know what that means, because that's I'm not just Renaissance. Saying, but that's not, I, they don't look like Renaissance men. What, I, 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 I literally like I don't know. It's a completely different I, era. I'm literally telling you the extent of my knowledge. I knew that the Renaissance men were coming to town. That's it. Again, a lot of the credit has to go to Adult Swim, simply for trusting that the process would deliver, and giving Michael and Zach that hands-on, creative freedom and control to let their personal, artistic and comedic vision filter through every scene in the final product. That, essentially, is how Smiling Friends captures the essence of online comedy while still working as a TV show, by getting as close to its individual creators and their sense of humour as possible. There's a reason why online content feels more personal than traditional media. It's because, generally speaking, there's a passionate individual behind it and not some corporate enterprise. By getting online creators deeply involved with every step of the process, Smiling Friends feels much more like a personal expression than a million attempts at trying to shoehorn in some influencer into somebody else's format. Smiling Friends feels like it was made by people who wanted to make it. It's an exciting time for online creators. Not only are there now proven ways to monetize your content, which would have sounded insane back when Scrotum 1 was first uploaded, but traditional media is looking at creators as more than just a bankable face or format that they can leech from and water down. The value of people who grew up learning to write, produce and market their own ideas honed by years of experience and direct feedback from their audience, is finally being recognised. And as someone who grew up watching a lot of that, yeah, makes me smile. Thanks for watching. If you've got this far into the video and for whatever reason you haven't seen Smiling Friends yet, then it comes with my full recommendation. In the US, it airs on Adult Swim and then it's going to be available on HBO Max from the 9th of February. And in the UK, it's airing on E4 between January, February, and then we'll be on All4 after that for streaming. If you live in another country, I'm not your dad, look it up yourself. Uh, until then though, why not hang around here and watch another video from me? I'm gonna let the algorithm decide what to suggest you, so if it's a bad video, that's essentially your fault. And until next time, this is the Pondering Llama, out. What is that? I don't know. Alex, Alex, grab it. I'm not gonna grab that. You grab it. Get it down!